Welcome to part two of the screencast series on getting started with the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI. In the previous episode, I covered the basics of getting the PHP wrappers into my project and using them to generate the necessary JavaScript to run a few simple Kindle UI controls. I also created a Kindle UI data source to populate a drop down control and showed how an array of PHP objects can be serialized into the needed JavaScript objects for the data source. If you haven't watched the first episode yet, I recommend doing that now as it covers the core concepts of how the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI work. In this episode then, I'll walk through a more advanced example that creates a Kindle UI tree view control, loads data from the PHP app using a data source, and then lazy loads child nodes for the tree view when we expand a parent node. To get things rolling, I'm using a project structure based on the previous episode. In addition to the standard jQuery, Kindle UI JavaScript, and Kindle UI PHP files though, I have a sample database file. I'll use this as the data source for the server API and load my hierarchy of data from it. I'm also going to use a simple HTML page structure that will provide a more visually pleasing page design. This structure, along with the needed JavaScript and CSS references, has been extracted into the header and footer.php files so that I can focus on the Kindle UI wrapper code. Lastly, I have a few files in an API folder. These files contain all of the code that I need to read data from my sample database and return a hierarchy of employees. Now, production applications that are using frameworks like Laravel, Slim, CakePHP, or others will have their own way of building the server API for retrieving data. Since I'm not using any of these frameworks, and since the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI don't require a specific server framework, I'll only cover the server API very briefly and won't go into detail on how it's built. The focus will be on the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI and how to configure them to use an API appropriately. To test my data API, I'm going to use a command line tool called curl. If you're not familiar with this tool, don't worry about it. There's a dozen great tools for testing API calls, including writing your own JavaScript or jQuery in a browser to make the AJAX call. Curl just happens to be my tool of choice for testing API calls. Now when I request the slash API slash employees.php endpoint on my localhost server, curl will send an HTTP request and display any results that it gets in the console for me. In this case, the data that it returns is a JSON serialized array of employee objects, and it's a very small list with only one person at this point, representing the top level of the employee hierarchy in the database. I know that the API works now, so I'll set up the basic tree view structure in my PHP code. This is done by creating an instance of the kendo slash UI slash tree view object. But without a source of data to work with, there isn't anything for the tree view to show. So I'll create a data source and set it up to read data from the employee's API. Now in the previous episode, the data source was little more than just a list of hard-coded items. For the tree view to get data from the server API though, I need a bit more than that. I'll need to configure a data source transport to read the data, and a schema model for it to understand the data that is returned. The transport is what tells my data source how to read, write, and delete data from the API. It's an abstraction that makes it easy to adapt nearly any source of data to be used with Kendo UI's controls. In this case, I really only need to read data, so I'm only going to configure a data source transport read object. I'll tell that object to read data from the slash API slash employees.php endpoint and tell it to expect a content type of JSON. Now I can assign the transport read object to the transport itself. Next, I'll create a simple data source schema model. This would describe the model that is being returned by the API so that the data source knows how to work with it. The only field I'm concerned with for the moment is the ID field, employee ID. After setting that, I can create a data source schema and assign the model to the schema. With that done, I can assign the transport and schema to the data source and assign the data source to the tree view. 
I'll also set the data text field of the tree view so that it will show the full name of the employee. And when I reload the page now, I see the results. Of course, this isn't much of a tree view with only one item in it. To see more than this, I need to change the wrapper code to use a hierarchical data source and tell it how to recognize and load the hierarchy. There aren't that many changes to make in order to get the tree view to use a hierarchy of data. I can pretty much add the word hierarchical in front of the three objects related to the data source, and I'm just about done. This makes it rather simple to switch between a flat and hierarchical data source as needed. One additional change is that I need to tell the schema how to recognize when there is child data to show. This will cause the tree view to show the icon for expanding and collapsing the tree. To do this, I need my data to tell me when there is hierarchical data to show. And if I go back to the raw data that my employees API produced, there's a field called has employees that tells me whether or not I have child data. And I can use this field as the has children setting of the hierarchical data schema model. The last thing that I need to account for is the data source loading the child data. Whenever I expand one of the tree view nodes that has child data, the data source will be called to load that data. And to do that, it will call back to the read API endpoint that I configured, and it will supply the ID of the model that I clicked by appending employee ID as a URL parameter. Now it knows to use employee ID for this because I told the schema model that this is the ID field. The end result is a request to slash API slash employees.php question mark employee ID equals two, for example. And I can test my API endpoint at that URL using curl. This lets me see that requesting the URL returns a list of employees that are underneath of the specified employee ID. Having verified that this works, I can reload my page and see that Andrew Fuller now has an arrow beside his name. This tells me that there is child data to view, and when I click the arrow, a request for the child data is sent back to the API and the results are loaded into the tree view appropriately. You can also see that Stephen Buchanan has an arrow next to his name, signifying an additional employee hierarchy that can be loaded as needed. Now as a reminder, the data source and tree view that I configured in PHP are not reading and serializing the data from within the PHP code itself. This is only configuring the JavaScript that the browser will use to read data from the server. And we can verify this by viewing the page source and seeing the JavaScript translation of the PHP configuration that we supplied. The Kendo UI control takes this JavaScript and uses it to make calls back to the server, processing the results accordingly. It's easy enough to get data to read and display, but what would it take to get a complete CRUD solution set up with a grid? Create, read, update, and delete. In the next episode, I'll walk through exactly that. I'll show the process of configuring a data source for a complete set of CRUD operations, show how to configure the display columns in a grid, including custom column templates for nested objects, and show you how to customize the pop-up editor for adding and editing rows in the grid, and much more.